I bought a frame at the thrift store, took it apart, and attempted a, a weaving project. But this frame didn't work. And here's the rest of the story. This is the time of year that I decide to do some spring cleaning. I know, spring is on its way. It'll be here soon. But I collect all kinds of bits and pieces of fabric. I have bins full of little bits and I sort them by colors and I sort them by sizes sometimes, but I usually get an abundance of white, off-white, cream, light gray, light, light, very light colors, some with little prints, and some of them I just want to make use of in some way. And this year I decided I want to try some weaving. <clears throat> so the first thing I did was try to think about how I'm going to weave and what size I wanted to weave. And I went to a thrift store and I bought a frame that had a piece of plexiglass in it and some really mangy mm, picture, I don't know what it was. But I took that out and this frame is the size of a placemat. So I thought I could just wrap fabric around the frame, wrap it around this way and weave it in and out with my fingers. But I found that for a dollar of expense, it is sturdy enough to do that and it's lightweight, but I found that there wasn't enough um, distance between the front and the back so that when I poked my finger in and poked it back out the other side, it really wasn't easy to do the weaving part. So I looked in my little closet and I found this and I had it for a long time and it's about the same size as the frame that I bought for a dollar at the store. It's a little bit smaller. Oops, it's a little bit smaller, but it works just as well. And in fact, because this is round and not um, flat, it actually makes it a little easier. And the second thing about this hand, hand, um, hand quilting frame for small areas is that it does come apart. So when I get part of my weaving done and I want to take it off, I have to cut some of the loops around the end but once I get one side loosened, I can pop this off. I can, uh, I did a minute ago. You can pop them off like that and you can slide the rest of them off and then cut the loops if you want to cut the loops. So I thought this, this would be a good one to, to sort of test with. So like I said, I've got a lot of stri strips and I'm not worried about the size in particular. I want something that's at least one inch and it can be as wide as, I don't know how wide this is, inch and a half or two inches because I'm going to sort of scrunch it up anyway to weave it in and out. So it's just going to be um, a, a random. And I've got a variety of different colors. And also, I don't mind if they are, um, you know, raw edges that are fraying. And some of them I've ripped. 
and they're going to get used as well. But I did find in my testing that I don't want to sew a seam between the two of these as you would normally sew a seam, right sides together, sew a seam and then open it out. It's much easier to weave it in and out if it doesn't have that seam as such. But if I just lap, lap the two and just stitch back and forth a couple of times on this lapped edge, like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just sew a whole bunch of these random pieces and just some of them are very short, some of them are longer, that's not a problem, and they're in different widths and I don't think that's a, uh, that doesn't bother me either. So I'm just going to lap them and just stitch a couple of stitching rows back and forth on each of these and create a long string of them. So that's what I'm going to do first. And then I'll start wrapping them around the frame. So I'm gonna sew first, then I'll wrap some of those around the frame. Okay, I've got enough here to start. So what I want to do is just open up one of these openings. I'm going to put a piece of that fabric there and that's just going to anchor it. Maybe. Yep, that'll anchor it, no problem. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go lengthwise first and then when I do the weaving part it's a shorter shorter distance to weave. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But here at the end where I started I'm just going to go around behind and then come up to the other end give it kind of a hold with my finger down here again, up here, and I'm not too worried about how far apart they are, but I do want to not have them overlap too much. I'm just going to sort of scrunch it up a bit on here, and make that one there, and I want to keep it kind of tight. Not too tight though. There. That's good. And then just keep going. And I will kind of decide how many rows I need to make because I it, it's all um, just by guess. I like using things that I have at hand and, you know, upcycling is the kind of thing to do these days. I can't make quilts out of all of these fabrics. Okay, so here I've come to the end of what I already sewed together. So I just need to sew some more pieces together and just keep going like that. But it really looks like a mess right now, but I think it'll work out all right. I'll just sew another bunch of strips together and see how it goes. So I think now I've got enough wound around the frame crosswise. And you see it's all a variety of light colors and there's seams everywhere. So now it's time to start thinking about going into the weaving part. And this is going to be tricky. Not really. Here, I'll do it this way. So here's my end. 
I'm just going to bring it down around the end to give it a bit of stability. And here's where you don't want to have too much extra because you have to pull these things through all the way. But now when I want to go across here, I'm going to sort of weave with my fingers in and out to start. So I'm going to come around to the end here and I'm going to put my finger in here and I'm going to go through there. Now normally I don't think I'm going to have to pull it through all the way. Uh, each time I should be able to lay it down on a flat surface. Okay, but just to start I'm going to do it this way to show what I'm thinking. And then I'm going to come to the next part here. And I'm going to pull this through here. And I'm going to keep these up as close as I can to the top end here. So I'm on this side here. I'm going to go through to the other side again here. But I'm going to just do this with my finger. See, I'm here my finger. I'm going to pull that through here and pull the strip of fabric through two at once on the back side. Just pull it right through. See, that's what I mean. You don't want to have too long. And it's easy just to stop, put a little clip on it, and then add a couple of pieces onto the end. I think that will work. So I'm up on the top now. I want to go back through to the back. And then I want to come back up through the top. So if I do this all from the top side here, it's just a bit of serendipity, I think. You can do as big a section as you want. You can do a weaving of two over, two under. It's, it's, you just have to decide for yourself what you want to do. I'm just doing one over and one under and I'm kind of pulling the first row anyway. I made it quite long. The first row anyway, I'm going to do one over, one under. Let me see, my, la my strip is too long. It takes a long time to pull through. Next one down through and then back up just like that that's a bit awkward but you know i think it's going to look quite good when it's done and it's certainly accomplishing one of the my goals and that is using up things that I have. Uh, I'm never going to sew all these little bitty pieces of uh, scrap fabric into quilts. I have to decide to make something that is going to use a fair, fairly large amount of strippy things or things that really... Um, are going to make a useful, useful thing. And I do want some placemats. So here's my next one. Go down and up. You know, I bet I could do two at a time, but I think I'm just gonna, on the first one here, I'm gonna just do one.
And each time I do that, when I get to the end of the row, I'm just going to use my finger or my thumb and just sort of move that first row as close as I can to the end. Now I'm just going to do a couple more. Then I'll show you what it looks like. Where did I put the end? There it is. If I just tip it up on the edge of the table here in front of me, it's going to be a lot faster than holding it up in front of the camera. Okay, so I did about five in a row there, and I'm just pulling it through all of those at the same time. And as I said, I think it's it may be tedious for some. Okay, so I've got the first row done. Now at the end here, I'm going to take this piece and come around underneath and bring that end up on the other side so that secures the first one and then what I'm going to do is just turn this frame over in my hand and when I go backwards across the top of the frame you see here how it's forming uh, a weaving here. So I'll just make another row and show you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay. So there's the first two rows. And I know it looks like a mess right now. But if I keep pushing this up with my thumb after each pass, and keep it quite tight around the end, I think it's gonna turn out okay. So I'm just gonna continue on this one. No point in having you watch it for two hours. I think, you know, it's a slow process. It's not fast. And it is a bit, um, uh, what am I, calming, I think. I'm not upset that it doesn't look even. I like the fact that it's going to be a bit um, serendipity, you know, uh, a little bit whimsical and not quite perfect because I like the idea of sort of hand crafting things and they don't have to look perfect all the time. And if it's a placemat, I'm going to want to wash it so it has to be able to withstand the rigors of going through the washing machine and um, being used. But I've, I'm going to like this um, project, I think. So I'm going to just continue on and make some and I'll um, show you what's happening a little bit later on. Okay. So it's not turning out too badly. You can always use your fingers and kind of squidge it down towards the end so that there's not as many spaces or big spaces in between. And likewise, you can sort of squidge it to the side. I think I just have a new word, squidge. Sometimes if you miss the under or over part on the back, you're going to get a, a big loop like that. But I think um, I could just take a hand sewing needle and tack it down if I felt it was, here's another one here, right along here. It's a bit, I missed it. But I think it's, it's going to look quite organic and I like the fact that I'm using things I've got that are going to be difficult to put in quilts because they're just not easy shapes for what I like to do. Now you see I just pulled a thread off the end, but that doesn't bother me. I can just use the scissors and cut those off. And the first time I wash them, it's going to be lots of, lots of threads coming on the surface. So I think they'll just come off with a, with a uh, scissors each time. So I'll just keep continuing doing this. I think it's kind of fun. I'm enjoying the process and um, it's uh, not so bad. And it's going to really use up a whole variety of things. Here's one I've taken off the frame. And you can see here's a big loop that I can just put a couple of hand stitches there and hand stitch it there. <clears throat> Here's the back side or the front side, whichever side I like better. They are reversible. Here's a piece I can just tack down and here's a piece I can tack down. If I were being a bit more careful, I think it would um, I would not miss so many of those things, but I've just been sitting in my uh, rocking chair and uh, doing this. Now, what I did do before I took it off the frame was I took a hand sewing needle and all along the edge, I just um, did a stitch, a running stitch all along the edge to hold these from coming undone. Most of them are, are held down a little bit. 
but I think I would have to come along here with a sewing machine, maybe with a decorative stitch and a walking foot maybe, and go along there. And um, I could leave the edges raw. It wouldn't be too bad, but I think the first time I washed them, they would be a miserable lot of stuff to try to figure out. So I think I'm going to try to corral them. And I've tried this with the first one I made. So I didn't have the best of success, but I took a three inch piece of fabric and with my serger, With my serger, I surged along and cut off all of those um, raw edges. And what I'm going to do then is get a piece of um, quilt batting, put it in here, and then just put a, a, a flap, I don't know what you call it, a flap to fold back up onto here. And then I would just machine stitch and put some rows of machine stitching in the quilting here to hold it. Now this piece in the corner was my attempt to um, close the hole. When I surged it, I pulled the ends too far in one direction and I got a big hole at the end. So I think I just we wove a piece of fabric in and I've got it pinned in place right now. But these are the raw edges along here and they're still showing. So I'm just working away at it. And um, I think once there's a piece of batting in the edge, that will keep some of this puffiness down and I'll quilt it. And then, like I said, I'll just put... Um, a um, facing, that's what they're called, a facing on the edge and fold it under and then attach it where I've got the row of, of surging. And that way I think it would make it easier to keep all of my placemats, okay, all of my placemats an even size because this second one right? I need to have the facing to come around the outside of it so that it's the same size. And that way I'll get a sort of uniform set of placemats out of it. But they're substantial. They're very substantial. They're going to be very serviceable, I think. And I'm, I'm getting much fonder of them than I was. So I think they'll be a nice addition to my my uh, table. Anyway, when I get a few more done and if I finish this facing here and this quilting and finish them off, I'll show, show a picture of them uh, on my table. <laughs> 